that's the same with my Savior Jesus Christ. I'm happy and excited to be once again back in Florida, Tampa. Last time when we came, we had a meeting in Wilfrank Hills and Mary Andy's house. And uh, I remember that meeting. And this time it is here in Abraham's house. And so I'm happy that we are here. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. What makes this meeting beautiful is the presence of Jesus. When two people come together in Jesus' name, Jesus is there. And if Jesus is there, many, many things are going to happen. I thank God for his matchless presence and I thank God for his word. What keeps us going in our life is the word of God. I'm very, very happy and excited because Abraham and Mary have been a good friend of mine, friends of mine, the family. And this time we were able to meet Shalini and last time uh, Evangeline. So we met the whole family. We thank God for the others also who come long way, long way from Pennsylvania, Connecticut. Connecticut, and all the other places. You have taken trouble to be in the presence of God, and God is going to bless you. I had come prepared with a message, but when I came here, I liked this thing. Adventure is in my soul. So that ticked me off, and I'm going to say something very different from what I prepared. So be ready to receive this, because... What does your soul have today? Does your soul have adventure? One, any human being has body, mind, and soul. These three are related, body, mind, and soul. We see only the body. We take care of only the body. Food for the body, sleep for the body, bath for the body, everything for the body. We rarely see the soul, but we see the mind. Mind is the intellectual part of us. We read the books, we read papers, we study and develop our intelligence, the mind. But soul we rarely see. Adventure is in my soul. What kind of adventure? Adventure to risk life and kill yourself or us adventure to save yourself? What kind of adventure is in our soul? What is the adventure that we have in our soul? Do we have depression in our soul? Oppression in our soul, or despair and desolation and loneliness in our soul. What is controlling our soul today? That's what ticked me off when I came here. And I was sitting there, I went to a house nearby, but this really troubled me, that verse that was written here. Adventure is in my soul. So I want all of you this evening, God wants you to check your soul. How is your soul? And I want to start with... Uh, third epistle of John chapter 1 few verses and then we will go forward from there it's a very interesting study I had not prepared this so you will hear a very very different one I came here and then God put this thought into my heart and is there adventure in my soul what kind of adventure do I have you know when people talk about adventure it's adrenaline junkies taking risk in life is that the adventure that you have or it's an adventure that you have where you have Holy Spirit pouring in your heart and stimulating your whole body. So we'll begin with this verse. Uh, anyone? Yeah. A third epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 maybe. Greetings. The elder to the beloved James, whom, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with I pray this evening that all may go well with you all, with all of us. And then? And that you may be in good health. That you may be in good health. Everybody wants health. Maximum money is spent on health. That you may be in? Good health. Good health. We spend our whole life making money, and then finally we spend all our money trying to keep the health. So health is very important. Health insurance is the biggest thing that is growing all over the world. It has come to even India now was not there. You cannot enter a hospital without health insurance. So that you may go well with your health. So this prayer meeting is a healthy prayer meeting. No unhealthy things are going to happen. It's going to be healthy for your body, mind and soul. We have some good food also after this. So it's going to be good for your body, mind and soul. It's a healthy time. No unhealthy. Your, you will be healthy and then as it goes well with your soul as it goes well with your beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health. All may go well with you. When he says all may go well with you, you may be in good health. As it goes well with your soul. So 
So another translation says that your soul may prosper. Is there any other body? Anybody has that translation? Yes. Can, can you read that? The Lord has prayed that in all things thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. A prospering soul, not a dying soul, not a perishing soul, not an anguished soul, not a depressed soul, not a lonely soul, not an irritating soul, not a soul which is full of fear, but a prospering soul. That is what God wants you to have. How does you have? A, how do you have a prospering soul? Only with God you can have a prospering soul. If you don't walk with God, you're you will never prosper. You can make money and prosper in this world, but you cannot prosper with God. Your soul has to prosper. Your soul has to be sinking with Jesus. You have to be born again. If there is anybody who is not born again today listening to the voice of God, make sure you're born again. People think it is born again is somebody's coin which some fellow has made, charismatic or Pentecostal. No. It is Jesus who said in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus asked Jesus, how will you be born again? And then Jesus said, you have to be born of the spirit and of the water. That means if you want to be born again, you have to have Jesus in your heart, filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit and you must take baptism. This is very important to enter the kingdom of God. That is where we begin our soul, where the growth of our soul begins. That's the first lesson. So if you haven't started the first lesson, make sure that you start, that your soul may prosper. Now the second thing that I want to make uh, come to is how to make your soul prosper. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord all Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, to guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, can guard your mind through Christ Jesus. Guard mind your, your heart and mind through Jesus. If your soul has to prosper, your heart and mind should be guarded in peace. You cannot change your heart in between. Many spiritual Christians have atrial fibrillation. Means quickly their spiritual life is shattered. Some of them have severe ventricular ectopics. If you are a medical person, you know. They go into asystole and then no movements after that. The previous day they were good. They were singing. They were happy. They were talkative. They were fine with everything. Suddenly the heart is gone. You know? Husbands don't talk to wives for a few days. Wives don't talk to husbands for a few days. They go into ventricular asystole. Means sudden stopping of their beat. So first your heart and mind should be kept in peace with Christ. Your heart and mind should be kept in peace with Christ. It is very, very important. If your soul has to prosper, your mind has to be right. If your soul has to prosper, what has to happen? Your mind has to be right. The devil rarely attacks the health. He attacks your health through your mind. He attacks your life through your mind. He destroys you through the mind. So that is why this message says, keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Stop worrying about the future. Stop worrying about the job. Stop worrying about the children. Stop worrying about health. If you worry, 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 your mind is going to be spoiled. God does not want you to worry at all. Can we cast our worries and burdens into God today? You are carrying too much of worry and burden in your heart that your soul is not able to prosper. Outside you are smiling. Outside you have adventure. Outside you are showing happy face. But inside you are burdened. You know there are things which you can't even share with people. You don't know how to go forward. The Holy Spirit wants to release you. Wants to give you freedom. Not bondage. Not to be a hiding Christian. Not to do shady things. Not to be doing, having a double kind of personality. One in front, one outside. But a clean one. 
when your soul is released, your heart and mind be guarded through Christ. So this is the main message that I want to get to this evening. That our mind and heart has to be straightened. I meet a lot of psychiatrists and I ask them, where is the mind? Psychiatry is the study of mind. Most of them have no idea. Some people say it's in the brain, some people say it's in the heart, some people say it's in the gut because gut feeling. Where is your mind? Mind is what controls your life, your decision making, your choices. Mind is what connects your body with the soul. Have the mind of Christ. And when, we, when I say have the mind of Christ, don't tell me mind your own business. This is what God wants you to know. I can handle myself, mind your own business. That's not what I want to hear today. Have the mind of Christ. Just think how Christ would, what Christ would do if he was in your position. This is a big message, so I'm going to take you to only one portion of this, one part of it. How do we have the mind of Christ? Let's, let's uh, check a couple of things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has known the mind of God? That he may instruct him. That you may instruct him. Who in the world ever knows what God is thinking? If you ask my son Abner, he knows exactly what I'm thinking. Maybe Abner more. Because she lived with me for a longer time. If you live with somebody for a longer time, you know how they think. Amobi, maybe Sofna even more. Because they know the mind of Christ. They know the mind of the person. Who knows the mind of God? So if you want to know the mind of God and the thoughts of God, you have to spend time with him. If you want to have the mind of Jesus, you have to spend time with him. You have to listen to him. You have to walk with him. Otherwise, you can't. You will never know what Jesus is thinking, what God is thinking about you. Who knows the mind of God? That, that we may instruct him. Ah. But we have the mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. I'm talking, please have the mind of Christ. But the apostle is saying, in the epistle, the apostle Paul is saying that you already have it. You already have it. You have the mind. Abner is born to us as our first child. So he has half my genes and half my wife Swapna's genes. Now, which is going to be dominating, no one can say. But he has the choice of activating what he wants. God has given you the mind of Christ. You have the choice whether to activate your own personal mind and make your flesh grow or allow the mind of Christ by that, I mean your soul will grow. You want your flesh to grow, your soul to prosper. When the flesh grows, sin grows. When the soul grows, the spirit grows. Hallelujah. Is that too intellectual talk today? Too much of a medical one? No, I hope you're all with me. You're understanding? So when the flesh go grows, the body grows, the desires of the body grow. So you have more tendency to sin. That's why fasting and prayer, subjugating your flesh, exercise, all these things are putting your flesh down, crucifying your flesh. But when your soul grows, the spirit in you grows up. So the soul, adventure is in my soul. Your soul has to grow. The real kind of Christian adventure, the real kind of spiritual adventure, the real kind of adventure is not what the world thinks. World thinks adventure means bungee jumping, climbing Himalaya, or driving a sports car with eyes closed. Those are not adventure. Those are risking life. Those are playing with your life. That's just adrenaline junkie. But this is adventure in your soul is making your soul grow. How has it been the last one year? How has it been in your life? It doesn't matter how your body is. If your soul is quickened, your body is going to be jumping up. But if you're depressed, you will lie in the bed. If you are oppressed, you will be in some corner. If your soul is quickened, everything will become right. Who has seen the mind of God? 
Yes, we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Can you say that you have the mind of Christ? How many of you really think like how Christ is thinking? Then you are on the way. Then you are set for eternity. This evening may God give you the mind of Christ. Romans chapter 11 verse 34. Romans chapter 11 verse 34. Romans 11 34. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? So again and again in different episodes, Paul is asking the question, who has known the mind of God? Who has known the mind of God? See, when children are growing up, they want to please their fathers. Why? To get something done. So they try to understand what the father or mother is thinking and work accordingly. We need to know our heavenly father, how he is thinking, how he would react. Do you really know your heavenly father? Last Father's Day, I was preaching in my sister's place in the church and I said, the most misunderstood person is heavenly father. People don't really understand him. And that is why fathers are also misunderstood. But they really don't understand the love of the father. Heavenly father loves you so much. He's a forgiving father. He's a caring father. He wants to do something special today. Today is your miracle day. Today is your healing day. You are not here by accident. God wants to bless you. When God brings two people together, it is for a miracle. It's for a, it's for a blessing. Not for a curse. Not for a disaster. Because he loves you so much. You need to know the love of the Heavenly Father. Let me explain simply. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his only Son Jesus to die on the cross to save me and you as sinners. He died on the cross for my sickness. Some of you have already heard my testimony. Anybody who hasn't heard my testimony? Not heard before? You haven't heard. You haven't heard. So I need to say that again a little bit. You know, when I was born, I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. Huge head and water inside. I was destined to die. My parents took me to many hospitals. Finally, they took me to Christian Medical College, Wellow. The first neurosurgeon of my country, Jacob Chandi, saw me as a little boy and said, this child will not live. My professor, Jacob Abraham, saw me and said, this child will not live. Even if you make him live, he'll be physically, mentally retarded, good for nothing. People may say like that, you're good for nothing. Why are you alive? What is the purpose of your life? Don't listen to that. There is a heavenly father who loves you. When all the doors closed and everybody said there is no hope, my parents brought me back home. They took water out of my brain four times. Now I operate such children, I put a tube in the brain and pump it to the stomach for ventricular peritoneal shunt surgery. Thank God that there was no surgery at that time. Shunt dependent, hospital dependent, medicine dependent, terrible life. Now I have a patient who had normal pressure hydrocephalus, whom I had shunted many years back from Kundangalam. He's waiting for me to come back because the shunt is not working properly. He went to two neurosurgeons and neurologists nearby and nothing has happened. So he said, when are you coming this, mo this morning? Their children called me up. Doctor dependent, shun dependent, miserable life. But when God heals you, he heals you completely. When God touches your life, he blesses you completely. God wants your soul to prosper. There is adventure in my soul. Yes, I have more adventure than anybody has in this place. Because my soul is synchronized with the Heavenly Father. Because my soul is jumping with the Spirit of God. When you synchronize your soul with the Holy Spirit, you have more adventure, more power, more than you can ever imagine. So my parents started praying. They knew Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the God who created heaven and earth. They prayed. When all the other doors closed, the door opened in heaven. God spoke to them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. They went out preaching the word of God. When they went out for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God came down for me. Jesus healed me. Why am I standing here in Tampa, Florida, in Abraham's house and sharing the word? Because Jesus healed a hydrocephalic baby and made him into a neurosurgeon. My God is a great God. He 
he's an amazing God. He's an unchanging God. He's a faithful God. He can do a miracle in your life. Just believe in him. Trust in him. Throw yourself completely into God's hand. Let all your problems be gone. Don't struggle in your life. Don't be so depressed in life. Don't be so oppressed in life. Don't worry about life. Cares of your life, you give it to him. God is going to do a miracle. The same God who healed me. The same God who led me so far is going to do a miracle in your heart. In John chapter 14, I think, no, it's 14, I think Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. troubled. Believe in me and believe in my Father. Let not your heart be troubled. If there is any troubled heart, if there is any depressed mind, if there is any mind with anxiety today, I want to tell you, let not your heart be troubled. Have the mind of Christ. Let the peace that passeth all understanding control your heart and mind. I want to read one more verse from Romans. Romans 8.27. Romans 8.27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. The God searches every heart. Today when we are sitting here, I may not know what you are thinking. You can think about, you know, you can sit here and travel around the world. I can go to India and come. That's the beauty of us. That's why people who have daydreaming, they don't succeed in life. Because they are in one place, but their mind is traveling. If you do it too much, then you will become a mental patient. Because your mind is always traveling, never in the body. That's how they need treatments. Double-minded people, schizophrenic, two personalities together. So these are problems of the mind. How do you get this right? By the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a spirit of love, power, love, power, and, and, sound power and sound mind. Holy Spirit is a spirit of power, love, and power. sound mind. When the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, sound mind comes. So if you don't have Holy Spirit, you don't have sound mind. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. You need the mind of Christ. What, is, what did we read just now? now? He who searches the heart. He who searches the heart. Knows what the mind of the Spirit is. What the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession for for the saints, according to the, will of God. according to the will of God. So God knows our mind and our heart. And when we pray, and when we pray in the Spirit, He makes intercession. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, makes intercession for us, for our needs. So tonight, when you and I are going to pray after this meeting, miracles are going to happen in our life. Mary Andy couldn't come, she was tired, but she's going to be healed when we pray here. Amen? Hallelujah. Uncle is going to go back strengthened. Baba uncle is also going to be quickened. Every one of you are going to be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is here. Adventure is in my soul. How is your soul? Now, if you want to have adventure, I'm only touching one point. I wanted to say so much, but my time will not come. If you want to have adventure, now listen to me very carefully. I'm Adventurous. I'm going to be mountain climbing, a uh, big mountain, rock climbing, with nobody around with just hooks and this thing. If I'm doing rock climbing, will I be looking at the rock on top or the valley below? If I look at the valley below, finish! You fall down. Suppose I want to jump from this rock to the other rock. Will I be looking down how deep the mountain is or will I be looking at that rock? At exactly at that rock. So many of us when we are driving, we see potholes. If you stress your eyes on the pothole, your wheel will fall in it. So if you want to avoid potholes, always look at the road. Never look at the potholes. Many of us are staring at the potholes of our life and getting destroyed. Repeatedly falling in the potholes. Because your eyes are on the pothole. 
Only one thing I'm going to change in your adventure. If you are climbing the mountain, keep your eyes up, not down. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't that exciting? Okay, now if you are driving, I just got my driving license in Florida one day back, or two days back, I'm excited. I've got an American license. So, but let me tell you, if you are driving a car forward, would you be keeping the car in reverse gear or the drive gear? Always forward. A Christian cannot live his life driving in the reverse gear. Back home in Kerala, we have a small animal called Kuriyana. I don't know what's the English name for this Kuriyana. It's a small one which goes around in the sand. Ant lion. Ant lion. Ant lion. Wow, so foul. I must check the, my Google friends. Ant lion. See, this has a habit. There's only reverse gear. No forward gear. Kuriyana, how many of you have seen Kuriyana? Kuriyana. I used to be so fascinated by this Kuriyana. You put it in the sun. Ant lion. Ant lion. It goes backwards. Many Christians are Kuriyana Christians. <laughs> they always are on the reverse gear. Going backwards. They have to get the mind right. Only one thing about the mind I'm speaking. Get the mind right. You have to get change your gear to the drive mode if you want to go forward in life. And you should never keep your eyes on the reverse mirror. You must keep the eyes on the road ahead. You keep your eye on the reverse mirror only when you are turning back. Most of us are so worried about the car coming behind us to hit so that you are driving. Your driving is all spoiled. You can look once in a while. All the mirrors you can look. I'm not saying don't look. But don't all the time reverse gear, reverse mirror. What happened yesterday? It should not have happened. Why did I fail? I should have passed much earlier. This is happening again and again. What will happen to me? What is the point of my life? When will I ever go forward? Thinking repeatedly about the past mistake, past failure, past this thing. Stop it forever. If you have to prosper, if you want to have an adventure in your soul, keep your eyes forward, keep your eyes on the goal. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of your faith. Let not your eyes look at the people around, surroundings around, the waves around, situation around, but keep it on Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. A big hallelujah. 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 Now I want to make stress this point and get it into your head nicely. Are you with me? Yeah. This one point to rectify. There are so many things we can rectify in your soul and your mind. But this one point, let me just stress it very nicely. Come with me to a few uh, verses. We'll quickly read. We will begin with Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. This is, message is not prepared earlier. It is extempore, like hibachi. Immediately served, cooked. It is not kept before. So hot hibachi message. The adventure is in my soul. So let's hear that. Do not remember the former things. Do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. Now take a decision now. Do not keep thinking about the past. Your past is over. Your future is in front. Think about the future. What God has in mind for you. Stop thinking about the past. Leave the past behind. Do not think about the past. Nor, think, nor consider the things of old. Two things. Nor consider the things of old. Oh, I was working there. You know, people are always talking about past testimony and they don't have any testimony last week. Then it is a dangerous thing. My son, when I got my license, you know, first thing he said, now Papa has got one more testimony. Every time I get something, children know it is testimony. It's going to be packaged into a testimony. The very next meeting, I will say. He has got one more testimony. Yes. We went into one uh, DMV here. What is that place? Pasco County. Pasco County. Just to check how I can appear my just test. To just to clear. So Abner goes straight into the inquiry fellow and said, can we have a slot for driving? I didn't ask him to ask that. We went to check things. We went with the papers and the appointment was the next day in Hillsborough. Morning return, evening driving. So we just went to check in what all things you need. So that man at the counter said, yes, 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 you can do it today. Do you have a driving permit? I said, yeah, I took permit last year in Connecticut. I gave it to him. 
do you have two proofs of residence? I said, yeah, I just got it. I gave it to him. Uh, go and sit there. We'll call you in a few minutes. The driving will be ready. Before even I realized, we were in the counter filling up papers. And within minutes, I was in the car with an instructor taking the driving test in a Pasco County. I just went to check on it. And this man was so sweet that my driving was like a pleasure driving. He said, no tricking, no trouble, just follow the rule, I'll help you. When I came back, I said, thank you so much. I enjoyed the drive, he enjoyed it too. I shared my testimony with him also. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when I came back and got out, without even realizing, the license was in my hand. That's how God works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change your mindset. I can think of the failure I had before in Connecticut when I went with the truck there and how he ragged me and how he tricked me. I could have kept thinking about it. I could have worried about whether I'll make the same mistake this time. No, I just kept thinking the future. Have an adventure in your soul. Every day is a new day. Every day is a blessing for you. Forget about the past. Live in the present because God wants to do something more in your future. Consider not the past. Consider not the past. Why? There is a reason. Behold, I will do a new thing. This is the message for tonight. Behold, I am going to do a new thing. Philip Uncle. You think, what new thing I am going to God is going to do in my life at this age of mine? He is able to do. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am excited. I don't know whether Uncle is excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uncle is ready. Ready for the new thing. Amen. <laughs> he says, behold, I am going to do a New thing. How many of you have come here expecting a new thing tonight? I didn't come expecting to preach this. I had a beautiful another message. But when I saw this adventure is in my soul, I, my soul just jumped out. Because there is adventure in my soul. Taste it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Behold, I am going to do a brand new thing. For a child of God, there is no retirement. For a child of God, there is nothing called old age. For a child of God, every day is a new day. Till the last day of your life, God will strengthen you, equip you, pull you, and lead you forward. Hallelujah. 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 You have to be going from here strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Transformed in your mind. Quickened in your soul. Strengthened by the Spirit of God. Behold, I am going to do a brand new thing. What is this brand new thing? That's what I want to tell you. What is this brand new thing? Yes, go ahead. Behold, I will do a new thing. Yeah. Now it shall spring forth. Now it will spring forth. Tonight it will come, not tomorrow. Tonight it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? Yes. I believe it. When, when God does something in your life, you will know it. <laughs> Shall you not know it? You will know when God does something in your life. Will you not know? You will know. You know God is speaking to you tonight. It is not an accident you are here. Because Heavenly Father is here. Hallelujah. Shall you not know it? What is the next one? I will even make a road in the wilderness. Two things he's going to do. A road in the wilderness. How a human person can make roads in the desert? Sand dunes will close it in minutes. Only God can make a road in the wilderness. Where there is no map, no direction, no human possibility. Structurally impossible to make a way for you. Law may not be supporting you. People may not be supporting you. Structure may not be supporting you. But God can go beyond the structure to make a road for you. Hallelujah. 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 When we applied for the, for the visa, only Abilene, Swapna and me, we had the interview call. Because Abner's we had not filed. He had already, he was already 24 when we filed. And Abigail had cost 24 when the visa date came after 10, 12 years. But when we went to for a meeting, God showed me a vision. A lady is taking and all the five of us are going. I checked with many people. They said, never. You have to go and write to them. You can never go once you have crossed even one day extra. We went to Bombay. I called him to come with me. He was very upset. He said, I'm doing PG. I don't want to come. You people are going to America. You go this, that, the other. Finally, I had to drag him, pull him there. And he came and he wanted to spend the time in the hotel. But then he came along with me as a nice, obedient son with a big face outside, standing there, holding my 
bag and everything. I said, God will bless you if you hold my bag. And I gave him the bag. <laughs> That's the truth. See, I'm keeping him and saying, it is the truth. And I went out inside and lo and behold, it was a lady. She took, uh, gave us three of us the visa and then she said, what about the other two children? I said, what about them? I said, one has finished medicine. He is doing his uh, PG and runs coaching. The other one has finished a dentistry. She is working in a mission hospital. Are they married? I said, no. What do you think about them? I said, what can I think? They are going in their life. No, you must be having some plans. You tell me what are your thinking in your mind. I said, one wants to finish PG and continue here. The other wants to finish the... No, you must have some idea, right? When she went on like this, I just said casually, it will be good if they can come with me to America. This is the green card. Let them come for interview next month. Green card interview without even filing his papers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My God is great. He is alive. Jesus is alive. He can make a brand new road in the wilderness. When you see no opportunity, when you see how your future will go, when you see your, you have no exit route, you have failed many times, you have no way you, by humanly going ahead, but he will make a way. Behold, I will make a way in the wilderness. Second thing he'll do for you, two I things he's going to do. He will make a road in the wilderness. I'll make a road in the wilderness. In the desert. desert will have rivers where there is no water supply. You will not go thirsty. You will not go dry. You will not go weary. In adventure, the most important thing is the water supply. In adventure, the most important thing is the map with you. If your soul is thirsty for adventure, you don't have to take the compass along. You don't have to say, have your backpack with the water along because he will provide the water for you. At every juncture of your life, how he led the Israelites, rock gave the water. Hallelujah. Heaven gave the manna. There came the real birds for their meat. That is the same God you and I serve today. Manna is going to come from above. The rock is going to give you the water and the birds. What are those birds which came? Quails. Quails. Most expensive bird meat to get. Quail again, quails. God gave to the Israelites. My God is a great God. Believe with me. Only one thing you need to do. Forget the past. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Forget the past. I'm going to say a few things about that and then close. Ecclesiastic chapter 1 verse 9. Let's go move forward quickly. Ecclesiastic 1 9. Book of Ecclesiastic is written by that, Solomon. Yeah. That which has been is what will be. Yeah. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done? Will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Oh, this is what common people say. There is nothing new under the sun. Routine, mundane life of America. Getting up in the morning, 7 o'clock in the office, then eating and then back and sleeping at night and then going to nothing new. Automatic machines on the road. Automatic machines in front of the computer. Rat race. Become a rat inside and outside. And racing with people around who do the same thing. There's nothing new. Everything is same. If you go, you get the donuts. If you go, you get the McDonald's. And if you go, you get the fast food. Everything same. You know exactly what you're going to get. You want medium, large, or small. You tell them you want it this way, that way. It's all fixed. Nothing new. Is there anything new? Only in the presence of God. Solomon is saying nothing new left here in Florida. You've done everything. Once you've done everything, your adventure soul will say, I want something new. I have finished with everything. Now I have driven a big car. I may be wanting to drive a lorry. I have run and driven so many things. I want more adventure. Where can I ca hold the next big steering? Yes, nothing new. Next verse, yeah. Go ahead. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new? Can you expect something in 2019 in your life and say, yes, this is new? I can go back from here after visiting so many countries that, that I have experienced so many new things. God is giving me every day new mercy, new loving kindness, new fijovas, new cherry govas. No, so many new things in life which you can never experience. God gives you something new every time because my God is a great God. He's an amazing God. He gives you something new. Yes, go ahead, please. Is there any? 
already been in ancient times before us. We think that everything has been there from ancient times before us. Yes. Yeah. There is no remembrance of former things. There is no remembrance of former things. Nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come. So when you want to get something new, you have to forget the former things. Why are we not receiving the former things? Because you are still living in 2001 or 1998. Come to 2019 where God wants to bless you something new. Forget about the past. You have to have the mind of Christ. Transform your mind. Transform your thinking. Your soul has to prosper. You have to grow spiritually. Not body prospering. Your mind has to, mindset has to change. There has to be a paradigm shift of the mind for you to spiritually quicken. Have the ad adventure in your soul. Adventure is in my soul. Then you will be excited to have a new thing every day with God. A new word from him. A new spirit from him. A new idea from him. A new vision from him. A new way from him. A new thing in your family which you have never expected. Something very unique. That God will give you. Yes, go ahead. No, I'll move, go take you faster. Isaiah 42 verse 9. Let's go quickly for something faster. Isaiah 42. I'm coming to the last bit. Yeah. Isaiah 42 verse 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Behold, the former things have come to pass. The new things I declare. New things I declare. God declares new things. The day of creation, he declared every day new things. He didn't remodel anything. First day he made some plants and he said, okay, let me work on these plants tomorrow. No, he made reptiles. Then he made animals. And finally on the last day he made man. He did not waste his time in redoing what he did the previous day. We keep doing that. Right? And we keep destroying sometimes what we made the previous day. All that we have built up, a relationship we built up for many years, we suddenly destroy it like this, with one word of ours. God doesn't do that. He doesn't destroy things which he has made. He always preserves things. He doesn't destroy anything that he has made. He preserves things. God is a preserver. If your soul has to prosper, you must learn to preserve things. Preserve your talent. Preserve your character. Preserve your nature. Preserve your relationship. Preserve everything that God has given you. If you destroy it, it makes it very difficult to build it up. You know, you can have wonderful vases in different places. You put it down and break it. Is it easy to mend it up? Even with quick fix and cello paper and all, it doesn't come back to the original position. So make sure that you don't keep breaking what God has given you. Don't injure your soul. Don't keep poking your soul. Let your soul prosper. God wants your soul to be healed tonight. If you're depressed, if you're worried, God wants you to heal you. Yes, go ahead. I declare new things. Behold, the for former things have come to So what does behold mean? See, look. Now God is asking you, don't keep your eyes closed. Be ready to behold. See, John said, behold the Lamb of God. Jesus was going. Immediately said, please look at that man. Behold. Now, what am I saying today? Behold, open your eyes and see what God is going to do in your life. I can open my eyes and see what God is going to do in my life. But if Abraham has to see, he has to open his eyes and see what God has to do in his life. Hallelujah. Um, are you with me? Unless you open your eyes, you will not see. You will miss it. It will go ahead of you. You will miss what God has planned in your life. Behold. Yes, behold. Behold. Yeah. The former things have come to pass. Pass. New, and new things I declare. Yeah. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I will tell you. So the previous night when you pray, God will tell you what is going to happen the next day. Because he knows the end from the beginning. You don't have to run to the prophet or here and there. Prophets are all good. I believe in all that. But you can receive it from God. I will tell you before it springs. Listen to God. Make sure that you are listening to God. Yeah. Let me take you. Uh, yeah, I can go. Sing to the Lord a new no, song. The, uh, Isaiah 48, 6. Quickly, 
jump two chapters, uh, five chapters, Isaiah 48, 6. You have heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? Now, will you not declare all what I have heard? Now, will you, have you caught a fire in your soul tonight? Have your soul really become adventurous? Spiritually adventurous. Not risking life. Spiritually adventurous. Doing things for God, the kingdom of God, which you have never done before. If I say, now Abraham is going to preach for a crusade the coming year. Abraham will say, no, 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 I will arrange the crusade and I will ask doctor to speak, right? <laughs> Believe it and see it that you are going to be doing it. And God will take you to do that. Amen? I want all of you to risk, have adventure in the spiritual life. Make your soul prosper that you take strong steps in the kingdom of God. Yeah, go ahead. 48.6. You, you have heard, see all this. Yeah. And will you not declare it? Yeah. I have made you hear new things from this time. Yeah. Even hidden things. And you did not know them. When you call to God, when you come to the presence of God, you will know things which are hidden, not known to you, not there in the encyclopedia, not available in Google, not available anywhere in the world, other sources. In the presence of God, in the secret chamber of your life, in prayer, you will hear very many things that are unknown. That's what talks in Jeremiah 33.3. He says, call unto me and I will show you the hidden things. Jeremiah 33.3. God wants to let you know something which are secret for him. Have you received any secret from God in this year? Go to him. Call to me and I will answer you. Call to me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. Which you do not know. Which you have not known. God wants to show you great and mighty things which you have never known in your whole life. Will you surrender your life into God's hand and say, God open my eyes that I may see things which you want me to see, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, about my life, about the kingdom of God, about my family, about my future. God is going to show you everything because there is an adventure in your soul. And the God is going to fill you with the Holy Spirit and take you through this. At the end of my message, I'm going to read one verse. That is Philippians 3.13. This is what the testimony of St. Paul in Philippians we started with one verse. No, before I close that verse, let me let me just quickly read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, and then I'll come to this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 10, verse 5. What prevents you from adventure? Why are you not progressing in life? One more thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 10, verse 5. You have to do something. You have to pull down every proud obstacle. Proud obstacle that is racing against the knowledge of God. You are so proud that you keep up putting up things every day of your life from knowing God. Proud obstacles. Yourself, your ego. It comes up every day as you grow forward. You have to break it. Break every proud obstacle that comes in between you and the knowledge of God. Yes. We take every thought captive. Secondly, you take every thought captive. If you want your mind and soul to prosper, don't start thinking everything wildly. Any thought that comes into your mind, just don't speak it out. That is the behavior of a wild man, not a spiritual man, not a man who is led by the Holy Spirit. I take every thought captive. This is an exercise. Mark it down for those who want adventure in their soul. Shalini, you are ready? This is your verse. If you want adventure in your soul, break down every proud, what is that? Yes. Obstacle. It's the same verse, same translation. Obstacle. And then take captive every thought. Yes. Argument. And make it obey Christ. And make it obey Christ. Everything should be singed with Christ. Singed with the Spirit of God. Sing to the mind of God. Sink your mind with the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. God is making you perfect like Jesus Christ. He wants to synchronize your mind with the mind of Christ. You have to break up certain proud thoughts, proud things, obstructions that you have. You need to go back tonight and find what it is. And your life, your heart is like a ventricular ectopic. Sometimes it goes into systole, it doesn't beat. It 
gets stuck, your life gets stuck for a few minutes. Sometimes it's atrial fibrillation, all kinds of things. There's no movement, no, no, no movement. You can have a cardiac arrest in spiritual life. You need to synchronize your mind with Christ. And finally, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing. I'm still running my race. Don't think I have become perfect. I don't count myself to have achieved everything. I'm still on the race. I'm just sharing with you my experiences. Paul says, I don't think I've achieved, I've finished the race. I am still running. Okay? We are all running together. But one thing, yes, go ahead. But one thing I do. One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching forward to those, reaching things, forward to those things in front. Which are ahead. Ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Paul said, one thing I do. But he mentioned three things. Because all these three things are together one thing. What is the one thing I do? Forgetting the past. Pressing forward. And the third thing? Press toward the upward goal. No, no. Three things. He mentioned. Press towards the goal for the prize of the upward goal. Press towards the goal. And? Prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. Let's read that verse again. One thing I do. One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are Forgetting those things which are past. Reaching, that is the beginning of the one thing. Then? Reaching forward. Reaching forward. That's the second part of the one thing. It's the same thing. When you are forgetting the past, what should you do? Reach forward. Go to the next level of spiritual life. Go to the next experience of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Go to the next level of vision. Now I am praying to God, if Paul can be taken up to heaven, I need to go there too. Leave my body, go and visit the kingdom and come. Pray something which you have never experienced before. Go to the next level of spirituality. Go to the next level. So, the forgetting, leaving the things behind. What does it say? One thing reaching I do. Reaching forward. To forgetting, those forgetting the those past. Things. Reaching forward. To those things which are ahead. ahead of me. And press towards the goal. And press towards the goal. Press towards the goal. For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Press towards everything that I see and what I want. No. Press towards the goal that God has set for you. Make sure that you are running towards where God is taking you. Not to your own destiny which you are creating. Your spiritual destiny is already ordained. May God reveal it to you. May God open your eyes, spiritual eyes. Your inner man and your heart. So that you are fully aware of your spiritual destiny. That you press on to that goal in Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? Shall we close our eyes for a minute of prayer?